final presentation of RubyConf 10. I hope you've all enjoyed the conference as much as I have. So to cap it off, um, my name's uh, CJ Kilbom. I'm Jonas Niklas. And we work at eLabs, a consulting company in uh, Sweden. And we want to talk about the front-end testing frontier. I'm going to start off by asking all of you a little softball question here. Uh, who here likes to test their code? Right? That, that was not very unexpected. We love testing in the Ruby community. I, I haven't seen anything like it in any, any other community. Uh, I guess maybe the small talk community, which I was never a part of. Um, but we absolutely love testing. But I'm going to ask you another question. Who here tests their JavaScript code or front-end code? Somewhat, yeah. All right, that's, that's not too bad. That was maybe a higher number than I expected, but still, much, much fewer of you than, uh, than the people who test the Ruby code. And I hope that's not because the rest of you don't write JavaScript code, otherwise I guess you wouldn't be in this talk. But the conclusion is that we love testing our Ruby code, but JavaScript, not so much. We rely on uh, maybe some doing some manual smoke testing, clicking through, making sure things are working but we don't really, in general, write that much JavaScript testing code. So why is that? I think that probably, at least for me, the, the biggest reason that I had a hard time getting into it was that front-end testing is very neglected in our community, especially in Rails. So the thing that really got me started with testing my Ruby was that as soon as I started a new Rails application, I had everything I needed to get started with testing it. I had all the scaffolding for my unit tests, for my functional tests. As soon as I created a new model or controller, it gave me everything I needed to get started. With JavaScript, there's nothing like that in Rails. So that means that we're on our own there. We have to figure out our own way forward. We have to pick a library to use. We have to figure out how to configure it and install it and everything like that, and do it all on our own which makes it harder. There's a, there's a speed bump on our way there to get started. Now, another, another reason I think is just that it seems hard. We think that front-end testing looks pretty hard. We're not quite sure how to do it. There's not as much documentation or examples or tutorials available as for normal units or, uh, or functional testing that we do. So, with this talk, our goal is to get rid of some of these notions and show you that it doesn't have to be hard and hopefully inspire you to get started with doing front-end testing in your own code. We're going to talk about two different ways to do testing and uh, the first one is integration testing. And integration testing, of course, means that we're testing our entire application from the top to the bottom, from the user interface all the way down to the database and trying to use it in the way that the user would. And the probably the most popular way to do that uh, in Ruby right now, especially in Rails, is with Cucumber, where you write your features in plain text formats. I'm sure you all have heard of Cucumber, so I'm not going to go into that. But even if you're not fond of the plain text aspects of Cucumber, you might use something like steak to write your integration tests in, uh, in pure Ruby instead, and that's fine. But they all have something in common. They all need something to, to drive the application, to act as the user, basically, to click around in it and fill out all of the forms and everything like that. And the way that we like to do that is with a tool called Capybara. And, oh, maybe you can see that. Can you see the, the rodent in the background there? Awesome, that's a capybara, so just for some context. <laughs> An awesome animal from South America. Um, so we have this library in the Ruby community called WebRat, um, which is a fantastic library for interacting with the web application. Basically it allows you to um, simulate how a user would interact with the application. Filling in forms, clicking links, etc. And it works really nicely, but the problem with it is that it doesn't actually execute any JavaScript. So you can't actually test your JavaScript code using WebRap. Um, 
it does have a sort of very very limited selenium mode, but it doesn't really it doesn't really work. And so I looked at this and I wanted to improve it, and I couldn't really figure out how to do it. And if any of you guys um, were at Yehuda's presentation yesterday, he talked about how to sort of incrementally improve a library by refactoring it slowly. And yeah, I didn't do any of that. Um, <laughs> and, uh, so basically, I threw the thing away and I, I wrote my replacement, which I called Capybara. And um, the reason I, I did that was because I thought it would be very hard to, to retrofit um, the main feature that I wanted for Capybara, which was for it to be drive agnostic. And what I mean by that is that the backend that actually executes your specs, your that executes whatever you tell the application to do um, should be switchable. So you should be able to switch seamlessly from one driver to another. We have a number of different drivers that we can use in Capybara for this. For example, we have Selenium, which most of you will know. It's basically a remote control for a browser. So it opens up a browser, usually Firefox, it can run against Chrome and IE as well. So we'll pop open an instance of Firefox and it will control this instance of Firefox, click around, fill in forms, etc. and so on. And the advantage of this is that it's actually using a real browser. So it has a real JavaScript engine, a real CSS engine, and it's uh, basically identical to what the user would experience. So it's very, very compatible. Unfortunately, it's also very, very slow. Um, it also requires a GUI, which is a problem. So it can't actually run on a computer that doesn't have a, a desktop client installed, at least not the local selection version. Um, so you actually need some kind of window manager in order to run, in order to run your tests, which obviously can be a problem on your continuous integration server, for example which might not even have a user interface installed. So um, <coughs> there's also this simpler driver, which is called Rack Test. And this basically works the same way that WebRat does. It runs your, your tests in a pure Ruby environment. And that also means it has no JavaScript support at all. So it basically works the same way as if you'd switch off the JavaScript in your browser. And it can do these simple simple things like clicking links and filling in forms and so on, but when it comes to more advanced stuff, obviously, you have to switch to one of the, the other drivers. There's another class of driver, drivers built on HTML unit, which is a Java library, um, which is basically a browser specifically written for testing. So this, um, this library can be used um, for completely headless testing. So it doesn't, doesn't need a graphical user interface, um, and it has fairly good JavaScript support. Um, so actually it can run most real-world JavaScript. Um, it's also pretty slow, and depending on which driver you use, it can be pretty tricky to set up. So the way, we actually have three different drivers at the moment which use this library. One is called Celerity, and this is basically a JRuby library that wraps the Java HTML unit API. And we have Clarity, which can be used from any Ruby, and it spawns a JRuby process, and it talks to this process via socket. And that's pretty good, but it's pretty tricky to set up, and it's pretty unstable. So that's, that's sort of the main problem with it. And we have a new one, which I encourage you, encourage you all to check out if you're, if you're using Capybara. It's called Akephalos, which is pretty cool, but it's pretty new, so it still has some issues. Um, but it's, I think, shaping up to, to become really, <coughs> probably the best Capybara driver if they can, if they can get it to work properly. Um, and the last one we have is NVJS, which is super fast, um, completely headless, which sounds awesome on paper. Unfortunately, the, um, the JavaScript and CSS support isn't very good. It's, it's um, for those that don't know, it's a DOM implementation written in <coughs> JavaScript. Which is kind of cool. Um, so um, it's very, it's very fast, not very compatible. And the way we switch between drivers in Cucumber 
is that Capybara sets up Cucumber tags for you, which are tags that you can add to your scenario or feature files. Um, and you, by specifying this at JavaScript tag, you can switch on the JavaScript enabled driver. There's also specific tags for the um, drivers, for example, at Selenium available and so on and so forth. So you can easily switch to a different, different driver in your Cucumber features. All right, so that's integration testing. And of course, the main benefit there is that we can continue writing all of our tests in Ruby, which is very, very nice. But as you see from the different drivers, it looks like if you want to have good compatibility, it's probably going to be pretty slow. So if you're doing a heavy TDD workflow where you're test driving your code to drive the design of your JavaScript, then you probably want something that's a bit quicker uh, with a faster feedback loop. And of course, that means unit testing. Now with unit testing, where we're trying to isolate as much as possible of the application, that means that we're probably not going to want to have all of the different um, integration points that you have when you're doing integration testing. And that means that we'll have to write our, uh, our unit tests in JavaScript as well, to run them in, a, in an environment that's as isolated as possible. And there's been a number of different JavaScript unit testing solutions out there for, a, for quite some time now. And none of them, in our mind, has really uh, worked that well primarily when it comes to sort of integrating with your application. So what we're using instead, in our mind, the best tool for the job is Evergreen. So Evergreen isn't actually a testing library in itself. <coughs> it uses a JavaScript unit testing library called Jasmine, which was written by Pivotal Labs, and which is an absolutely awesome testing library. It's, in my opinion, it's the best sort of general purpose JavaScript unit testing library out there. Pretty cool. Um, but what we didn't really get from Jasmine was this really nice out of the box experience. We wanted to basically be able to just install a gem and have it work out of the box. No configuration necessary. Config config conventional con convention over configuration. Um, and we wrote Evergreen to provide the sort of best possible out-of-the-box experience. The trickiest problem when it comes to um, JavaScript unit testing library, libraries is templates. In order to test your JavaScript code, you really need a DOM, because most of your JavaScript code in your application is going to be modifying the DOM in some way. And the, for, in order to have a DOM, you need a, an HTML page. And most of, of the um, older JavaScript unit testing libraries solve this by just giving you a static template. And this would reference your, your JavaScript testing library and your production code. And you would put in whatever HTML you need. And it would run your JavaScript test. But what we did instead in Evergreen is we have a dynamic template which includes um, your template fragment that you wrote in HTML in a dynamic template. And this allows us to package the JavaScript testing library and everything else we need in order to run your tests nicely in the gem. So you don't actually need to generate anything, you don't need to put it into your project. It just installs the gem and it works. This also solves the other main problem that JavaScript unit tests have, which is that there's no way to do transactions. So in most, if you have a static template, like in most other unit testing libraries, you're going to end up in, in a situation where one test modifies the DOM, and then the next test sees the modified DOM, and it's obviously going to be dependent on this, on this new DOM. It's going to be coupled to the test that came before it. And that makes it a real pain in the ass to write JavaScript unit tests. I'm, I'm sure most people have tried to experience this problem at some point. So what we do in, instead is that um, we have uh, a special div on the page that we basically empty after each test and we fill it again with the template so that between each example in your test, the DOM on the page looks exactly the same. 
Yeah. So we want to show you all of this and how it all fits together with a quick little demo. So we've built a simple little application here. Actually, I can zoom in a bit, maybe. That's a whiskey browser. So you select Scotch whiskey, I should say. So you select one of the Scottish whiskey regions here. I like Isla, so I'll select that and click Show Distilleries. And then I'll select uh, Isla Distilleries, such as Ardbeg, and click Show Whiskies. And I get a list of some of the bottlings that Ardbeg has produced. So that's a very simple application. We, there's no JavaScript in this one. But we have a cucumber feature to test this. So first there's some background. I guess that's visible, good. Uh, so there's some background setting up the regions and the distilleries and whiskies. And then the scenario simply selects a region and presses the show distilleries button. It selects a distillery and presses the show whiskies button. And then it makes sure that we only see the whiskey that's from that specific distillery. So that's very simple. And we can run this. And now, this is using Capybara. Oh, sorry. Hold that up. So this is using Capybara. And it's using the default Capybara driver, which is rack test that Jonas was talking about before. So this does not do any JavaScript testing at all, which is fine because we don't have any yet. But this UI is not that great, apart from the design of it. We really like so that the user wouldn't have to click these buttons. So we've got another version. looks like this. So you'll see that the buttons are no, no longer there. If I select a region, it updates the menu automatically with Ajax. And when I select the distillery, it updates the list automatically as well. So that's a bit nicer for our very important whiskey browser application. We're going to remove all the frustrations when we're using this to limit our drinking, maybe. And I've added another feature to test this. Let me get this up on the screen a bit. There we go. So this is the exact same feature, except that I've removed the steps that presses the buttons. So if you compare it to the, uh, the one above it, you'll see that I've removed this one, and I've removed this one. Other than that, it does the exactly same thing. But the important thing to notice about this one is that I've added the JavaScript tag here. And this is, of course, using Cucumber. Uh, you can use it like, with steak, as I mentioned before, and then you just use the Capybara API to set the, uh, set the driver you want to use. But with Cucumber, this is very easy. And you'll also notice that I've tagged this specific scenario. So that means that I can have this scenario, which doesn't use any JavaScript, and make sure that that still works so we can make sure that we have good accessibility, etc. And But we don't have to run that one in Selenium or whatever JavaScript driver we're using. We can target the scenarios that we want to run really good. All right, so let's see how this looks when we run it. Oops, there we go. Now this will start just as the previous one did. It'll start by running the first scenario, which doesn't use JavaScript again. And that's right. And then it'll pause when it encounters the JavaScript tag and spin up Selenium and Firefox in this case and run the rest of the tests or the other feature in using Selenium instead. And that passes as well, which is nice. But of course, that takes a while. So if you're doing TDD and, and you really want to have that quick feedback loop. So I've got some unit tests as well. So if I look in the spec directory, there's a JavaScript folder here. 
And in that, I have a two spec files. There's a region menu spec and a distillery menu spec. And these are pretty normal Jasmine tests. They have some additional things in here, such as these require statements to load the JavaScript code that we're using and testing. This also means that we don't have to load all of our JavaScript code. We can load only the things that we really need. And a bit further down here, we have a template fun function that will load the template fragment that we use for this specific uh, test. Other than that, this is Jasmine and it looks very similar to our spec in many ways. We've got our describe statements, we've got our it statements here. And of course, we're using JavaScript's anonymous functions instead of uh, the Ruby blocks that we use, use in our spec. And the way we can run this is if we go to our application, Evergreen includes uh, an engine. So we can just go to slash evergreen in our application and it shows us a list of the uh, spec files that we have. And to run one of them, I just click that and all of our tests run. And I can show the passing tests here. I can show if there were any skip tests, which there weren't in this case. And this is very, very quick. So if we're doing TDD, this is great to just be able to change our test, switch to our browser, hit reload, and the tests run. In 0.024 seconds for these small tests. So that's great. But this is very simple test. I'm not going to go into uh, the specifics of it. We're going to make all of this uh, demo code available on GitHub later so you can have a look at it yourself to see how it, how it works. But this is a simple, simple test. We're not really doing anything that tricky with JavaScript here. I think one of the things that people find the most difficult or imagine this is the most difficult when they think about JavaScript testing is drag and drop. If you have a very interactive user interface with a lot of drag and drop in it, it's, at least I had a hard time figuring out how to test that. But with Capybara, it's actually very, very simple. So I'm going to switch to another branch here. And in this version, we've added a little shopping cart. When we run out, we can uh, select our favorite distillery and then just drag the, uh, the bottlings we would like to buy down to our shopping cart. Oh, can you see that on the screen? There it is. All right. So how do we test this? this is at least before we started doing this, this was one of the cases where we just sort of hoped that it would work. We'd try it out in the browser and uh, hope that the changes that we did later on wouldn't break this functionality. Well, which might be fine in a small app where you can sort of manually test the entire workflow every time you do a change, but in a big app that's not going to be uh, feasible. So I switch back to the uh, code here and there's uh, we have another feature called Purchase Whiskey. In order to quench my thirst with delicious whiskey, I want to purchase my whiskey of choice. And we have the same background here, setting up the uh, regions and distilleries and bottlings. And then we have a scenario tagged with JavaScript that just says that when I select a region and a distillery and I drag the whiskey Ardbeg Provence to the cart, then I should see the whiskey Ardbeg Provence in the cart. There's still some functionality missing here to actually get the whiskey delivered to you, but I'll, we'll leave that as an exercise for the audience. But of course, this is just cucumber. It's just plain text. This doesn't actually mean anything or doesn't actually do anything. So just by writing here and I drag the whiskey to the cart, it doesn't make that happen automatically. automatically. Mm -hmm. So the important part to look at here is the step definition. We have the whiskey steps file here that has our step definition that describes what the application should actually do or what we mean when we say that we drag the whiskey, whiskey name to the cart. So what this does is it uses Capybara's API to find the uh, DOM element that includes the text of the, uh, the whiskey we named 
And then it finds the DOM element for the cart. And then using Capybara's API, we just say whiskey.drag to cart. So that's all there is to it. This actually will run in, in Selenium or in the HTML unit uh, drivers and, and do that drag and drop for you. And if we test this, oh, actually, let me just do this this time. Cucumber features purchase with speed. So that starts at the background and it spins up everything we need, which takes a while, unfortunately. And we're done. So that test the dragon drop. So that wasn't too difficult, was it? No. Excellent. Now there is one. Uh, that's basically it. That's all there is to it. So using just using Capybara will give you give you the APIs to do basically whatever you want to do with JavaScript, and that's really really powerful. And and Evergreen really helps us sort of get around the limitations of doing front-end testing or integration testing uh, using, uh, using Selenium or uh, HTML unit by giving us a way to really run our, our tests really, really quickly. Actually, there's one more thing that, that I forgot to show you. We don't have to run our, our evergreen tests in the browser. We can run them from the command line as well. There's a rake task if you're in Rails or I guess in any uh, rake environment. Oops, I forget. I always do that. So, <laughs> rake spec JavaScripts, it uses Capybara as well. So it will use your default Capybara drive, JavaScript driver and run your unit tests from the command line. And if we configure it to use one of the headless drivers, then we can run our JavaScript unit tests in continuous integration as well, which is very nice. That's basically it, but there is one more thing. We've got a CoffeeScript branch here as well. How many of you uh, have heard of CoffeeScript? All right, that's a decent amount of people. How many of you have actually used it in an application? I think CoffeeScript is probably my favorite thing that's happened in the JavaScript space in the last, uh, last year or so. I, I really like JavaScript, but I'm not particularly fond of the syntax. So CoffeeScript is basically a nicer syntax for, for, uh, for JavaScript. And its syntax is, is structured in a way that makes you write better JavaScript as well, which I need. Uh, it helps you, it sort of gives you the structure, uh, or makes it much easier to get a good JavaScript structure and not just throw a bunch of, bunch of, uh, bunch of functions in the sort of top level namespace, I love PHP. So uh, Evergreen has built in CoffeeScript support. That means that we can write our, our unit tests in CoffeeScript instead. And the way it, it distinguishes this is we just give our spec files a .coffee extension instead of .js. So this is the same files but written in CoffeeScript instead. And the biggest benefit is that we don't have to write function on every single line in the test. <laughs> Which really helps with the flow, and I, I love that. So instead we've got this stabby lambda syntax that we have in uh, Ruby 1.9 as well. So this creates an anonymous function. You'll notice that it's independent, uh, it's indentation based as well. Uh, so there's not a lot of uh, closing brackets, or any. Uh, there's implicit returns and a lot of the uh, good stuff that we like in Ruby as well. And this works exactly the same way. We don't need to configure anything really, we just have to make sure that we have CoffeeScript installed. And Evergreen will just pick these up and show us them here as well, and we can click them to run. And they run in exactly the same way that the JavaScript would do. So I think that's a really, really nice way to write unit tests in, um, or write JavaScript unit tests in CoffeeScript. 
or I, I forgot to mention, all CoffeeScript does basically is that it compiles down to JavaScript in the end. So you can very well write your uh, JavaScript application code in CoffeeScript as well, uh, but then you have to make sure that that, uh, that can run, that, that compiles and uh, is uploaded into your, uh, included in your application in a good way. And of course, Evergreen only, um, Evergreen is only concerned with your testing code, so that it doesn't help you with that. But that's all I wanted to show you with the demo. Let's get back to the slides. So with that, I hope you, you have seen that front-end testing does not have to be hard. It's actually quite easy to get started. And uh, we provided some resources here. As I said, the, uh, the code is available on GitHub, the demo code that I showed. So feel free to check that out uh, and uh, have a look, play with it, and see uh, what you think of it. And if you want to contribute something back, maybe more whiskeys, <laughs> feel free to do that as well. And check out Capybaran and uh, Evergreen on uh, Jonas's GitHub account. And of course, Jasmine on Pivotal's account. And if you have any uh, any questions, feel free to to send us a message on Twitter or uh, come up to us here, and we'd love to talk to you about this and help you get started. Um, we can we'll take a couple of questions, and after that, uh, if there's time, we can show you some some real uh, what this looks like in a real application, uh, and not in this. Uh, maybe contrived example. But we'll open up for a couple of questions first. Yes? The drag to API in Kibara, what is that the real drag operation? Or is that fake in Selenium? It's in Selenium at least. Repeat the question. Oh, uh, sorry. Um, the question was if, uh, how close the drag to API in Kibara is to the real world. Um, and in Selenium, it's it's very close actually. Um, it it pretty much simulates um, taking the element and dragging it on top. Um, unfortunately, I, I think that um, um, Selenium doesn't support all sort of mouse native events in the operating system, so it's not 100% accurate. I think there might be some. Some very slight deviations, um, but I'm actually um, not entirely sure as to what those are. Yes. Um, when do you use uh, Capybara and when do you use Evergreen? Uh, the question was when do you use Capybara and when do you use Evergreen, and that's a really good question. Um, that's that's actually really really hard to so, sort of find a good balance between integration tests and unit tests. And um, I personally believe that integration tests are good for testing sort of the workflow through the application, but you don't want to use them to test every single possible case because it's just too slow um, and it's just yeah too too difficult to maintain. Um, so I'd use unit tests for driving the code in the same way you'd use RSpec in Ruby. Um, so to sort of really test the internal API of the code in isolation um, and use integration tests to test the so kind of like you could do kind of integration level tests to some extent with Evergreen, is that not true? The, so the question was if you can do integration level tests with Evergreen. Um, yes and no, it depends on how, how JavaScript heavy your application is. Um, but what you can't do, for example, is AJAX requests because you don't have a Rails application running. Um, so um, when you're running Evergreen um, mounted in the Rails application, like on slash Evergreen, obviously you'd have the Rails application running. Um, but if you're running it from the command line with the rake task, then it doesn't actually even use your Rails application. Um, so you can't rely on the Rails application being there. So you can't test AJAX, for example, um, so uh, there's limits to what you can do in JavaScript unit tests, and there's limits in general. Like even even testing drag and drop, for example, in JavaScript unit tests um, can be a little tricky. Yeah. 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 Yeah
we actually do that as well in the, the application. We might show you that. Later. Um, did you have a question? You actually, so you actually answered it. So. All right. Okay. Um, yes. So does the evergreen tap uh, into the rails uh, auto tests? The rails uh, auto tests stuff. So if, if you run auto tests, does it run also the evergreen? Ah. So, so the question is if. If um, Evergreen um, taps into Rails auto test, then I think the answer is no. I at least haven't seen anyone do that. It might be possible. Um, in the back. Can you speak up? All right. So, so the question was, if I understood this correctly, how how you keep the HTML templates up to date um, in your in your unit tests? And um, when I first started out with unit testing in JavaScript, I actually wrote this really elaborate script for sort of taking a Rails uh, Rails template and dumping it into this JavaScript the testing template, and it, it was pretty weird. Um, but I've come to realize that you need to, at least for me, I, I find it works best to treat the, uh, the templates for the unit tests sort of as fixtures. So you actually need, need to update them manually. And um, you need to let your integration tests make sure that the, um, the JavaScript still integrates with your, with your application in the right way. That's what I've, that's what, what's sort of worked for me. Do we have any further questions? Yes. Can you tell the audience why there is no weather in whiskey? Why there's no I can answer this. <laughs> 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 Alright, so Yarko wanted to know why there's no letter E in whiskey, and that's because this is Scotch whiskey that we're talking about, which usually doesn't uh, have an E um, in the name. Now, American whiskey and Irish whiskey, on the other hand, usually spell it with an E. And if you want more information on that, you can talk to, to Paul, uh, of course, who is a avid whiskey fan as well and lives in Scotland. So, that answer your question? Good. All right. <laughs> So we have just um, a couple of minutes left. So if you want, we can just give you a quick look at one of the uh, applications we've been working on lately. That's a very, very JavaScript heavy application. It's basically, well, most of it is JavaScript and then there's a simple Rails backend. And this is where we really uh, got into doing this a lot. So What's the one more question? Do this get some money and to pop up in the corner? Yes. So um, the question was if we could show just Selenium running behind behind the terminal here. So if we run rig cucumber now with the background music nicely provided. <laughs> so the first part is running with drag test, which we obviously can't see. <laughs> there we go. So the actual... I meant on the big demo you're going to show right now. Oh, well, yeah, so, all right, let's, let's switch over to that. Uh, should we just, how much time would we do it? <laughs> I guess we could just get the, uh, get the test started. I think you're the last session of the day, so I think as long as anybody wants to stick around, you have time.
right, well, yeah, unless unless Hilton boots everybody. If, if we can take to like eight in the evening or something, <laughs> we take that long to run, eh? <laughs> no, the, on this computer, this is a MacBook Air, so it's not the most powerful computer. Uh, this entire suite takes about ten minutes to run. Why is it so if you want to stick around and watch all these green dots fill up the screen, it's very cool. Actually, actually if it's a new MacBook Air, it might be faster if it's I.O. bound. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> I.O. bound. All right, so I'm going to run one specific feature here. Uh, what is the name of it? Drag allocations. And let's get rid of the other stuff here. Move uh, this to the side. Uh-oh, get it running first. Just imagine some nice elevator music going on in the background here. Yeah, this is all Selenium. This is a Selenium web driver? Yes. Capybara only uses Selenium web driver. Is Selenium, is Selenium just Firefox? No, you can use Selenium to, uh, with Chrome or um, with IE as well. But you have to configure that uses Firefox by default. Actually, many people seem to want to use Chrome. Yeah. Many people seem to want to use Chrome, um, but in my experience, Chrome is much, much slower via Selenium. So actually, um, uh, even though it starts slightly faster, um, you usually end up with a much slower test suite if you run Chrome. So I actually recommend using Firefox. It usually works much better. Also, Chrome doesn't support drag and drop. So obviously, this is why you want continuous integration, probably, uh, if, because you you want to be able to make sure that your entire suite is run. But if you have very heavy front-end integration testing, then it's going to take a while. And so the best thing that we usually do is that we run our specific feature that we've been working on, and uh, and we rely on the unit tests for. Uh, for driving the development, and then we uh, let continuous integration take care of the rest. All right, I one more question. Um, yeah, I've been following JS Test Driver. Can you mm -hmm. look at that at all? Um, yes, um, JS. That's the one that um, that uh, sort of. Myself, um, and I, I remember sort of looking at it and thinking that, well, this is way too complicated. Um, so that, that was sort of my reaction to it. Now, I'm, we're not really doing anything that's particularly new with Evergreen, or um, we're just packing, packaging it to make it simpler to actually get people to do it um, well, and to get ourselves to do it. So, um, yeah. Okay. Um, do we have a particular CI setup? Do you guys use um, Celerity or one of those? Or the Pearl like Headless Environment? Or do you use like a virtual frame buffer with Selenium? What would you switch off to do it? The dirty secret is that we're really terrible at actually setting up CI. Ah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're waiting for Dr. Nick to solve that. Uh, yeah, okay. exactly. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so, um, I have no answer to that. <laughs> um, actually, can, can we just show the... Uh, is it okay to show the, uh, the, uh, the unit test from here? I think that's interesting. 
So let me just show you one of the um, one of the spec files in this um, in this applica application. Um, sort of a real world. Um, uh, JavaScript unit test file written in Hotscript. So this is, as you can see, it's pretty big. Um, this application has a lot, a lot of JavaScript unit tests. Um, I've been following Kevin Bear on and off as client needs arise. I mean, some months ago there was a, a, a path to merge Capybara and WebRoute. Is that still going on, or what's, what's the story um, there? I don't know, actually. Um, really? Okay. Um, apparently, um, um, Brian was here, Brian Hunkam, um, and um, I haven't been able to find him. So um, I haven't really talked to him, and I haven't talked to him in ages, so I don't really know what's happening. Um, from my perspective, I, I sort of don't feel the need anymore. Um, so if someone wants, wants to do the work to make that happen, then that might be interesting. But I don't really know what that merge would entail either. So sort of okay. what do we need to do to merge these libraries? Um, I don't know. Okay, fair um, enough. <laughs> Do you have a question or do you just want to tell us that we're out of time? No, I have a question. Okay. <laughs> so can you guys just provide a little bit of um, insight around the maintenance of a test suite like this? Just your personal experience, maybe even on this project? Um, so I think the, the biggest biggest hurdle sort of that we are facing question, now. Oh, the, the question was if, if we can um, um, talk about the maintenance of a test suite in an application like this. Um, so um, the bigger, biggest hurdle for us right now <coughs> is the is the execution speed of the test suite because um, it's just getting ridiculously slow. Um, and we have some ideas on on what to do and how to fix that, um, but we haven't really gotten around to it. Um, so that's that's really our biggest problem in this application right now, just because it has so many JavaScript tests. Um, other than that, I. I don't really think we've had a problem. Cucumber it really allows you to sort of nicely extract um, and organize your your integration tests. And um, with with Evergreen, it's sort of writing your writing your JavaScript unit tests is basically like writing your your Ruby unit tests. So I haven't really had a problem with maintainability. I think we're done. Thank you so much for your time.